All right, Kevin back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today I am here with Zion Kim. Zion, welcome. So awesome to have you on the show today, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. You bet. And you know, this is I I, I know we were talking before we hit the record button and, and we were re- reminiscing on where we met and we were both kind of like, man. Time flies, <laughs> but yeah. it was uh, almost two years ago at Alex Mendocian's Pathfinder event, uh, and and I want to give Alex a shout out. Man, I, I met Alex years ago mm-hmm. through Joe Polish uh, back in the days when when Joe was working with carpet cleaners, showing carpet cleaners and restoration contractors wow. how to better market themselves, and, and that's how I originally met Joe back in 19... 19- 96 because i had a cleaning wow. and restoration company and, uh, wow. was, and i had no idea yeah him and alex did some stuff way back in the day and and that's how i originally met alex and then ended up at his pathfinder event and that's where you and i met and and i was i would just comment how like yeah you've been a dad since the last time yeah. you and i actually talked and and uh, i just I, sidebar really quick because I am a dad too. I, I've got seven kids. We finally figured out what was causing that, you know. <laughs> so, wow. But uh, I mean, what's it like, Zion? How has be? I don't normally ask people this, but I'm just. Hmm. How has becoming a dad just shifted things for you? How has that impacted things? How has that changed things for you? Yeah, I would say that. Um, uh, of, of course, it's been one of the most significant um, shifts in, in my life. But, um, you know, the, the biggest thing that has shifted for me is really uh, looking at all the different aspects of my life. And I, I think the first aspect is uh, really like more long term legacy based thinking. Okay. So it's it's knowing that I get to build for you know, generations. Right. So I think that in early in my career, uh, I was just kind of building what was in front of me without and and just kind of wanting it to make it through you know certain periods rather than, hey, this is what I want to build for so that you know my daughter is absolutely taken care of and my family's taken care of. So that shift uh, really changed the way that I think about and make my decisions uh, mm-hmm. altogether. Um, and then you know the other side is uh, a lot of my personal habits, of course. Um, just really shifting and, um, you know, like, you know, just my alcohol consumption, right. Uh, like reduced, right. Just so that I can uh, be more present. Right. And, uh, and, and I think the, and, and this dovetails into the next thing that I want to share, which is the biggest shift has really just been, you know, looking at what are the things that I want to pass on, uh, in terms of, you know, patterns and traumas and, you know, di- different types of things in terms of how I operate in the world. And what are certain things that I want to make sure really stop with me, right? Yeah. And it really, um, like, and, and, and I think that really became this forcing function to really uh, make sure that I'm highly aware of how I be, how I show up, um, you know, who I actually am, you know, as a person, as a man, as a, as, as a father, as a partner, and, uh, and just really looking at that holistically and just, you know, really asking myself, Hey, like, is this, you know, um, is this the level of consciousness that I want to operate from? And is this, uh, how I want to pass things off? So, you know, so a lot of it has really just been, uh, diving in, uh, like a lot deeper into myself and just looking at, Hey, like what, what's the work I still get to do here? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I know, you know, becoming a father for me, it was a big shift too. And it's like, it, my, my priorities really shifted once that happened. And I know, you know, have, watching my son being born was one of the most emotional experiences of my life. And I can still just recall that just like it was yesterday, you know. And, and now, I mean, my gosh, he just turned 16 this this last wow. month and stuff. Yeah, you know, congratulations. Like, Where did the time go? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, okay. So what I want to do is kind of to start this off, uh, I, I want to you know give you the opportunity 
to so we can set a little bit of context and the listeners get an idea of who you are and stuff yeah. and, and, and what really inspires you. So let's give you the opportunity to talk about, you know, the, the work you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work you do. Which kind of like set a little bit of context here, Zion. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I primarily serve uh, entrepreneurs, small business owners, and uh, and and that was yeah, and I think you know to a certain extent, uh, I'm really serving versions of me, right? You know, past versions, current versions, and future versions of uh, of myself, and just people that I like to be around, people I like to hang out with, a lot of our friends, right? And you know, and and you know, the inspiration for this company, I think, really came from. Um, so the, the company we have today, we, we help hire and train executive assistants, right? And, uh, we have, um, uh, a, a model where we do this all for you. We have a model where if you have an existing assistant, we also train them. And then we're also releasing a software, uh, that is an AI executive assistant that does, uh, you know, some of the stuff that we're also training people how to do so that it could be elevated and do other cool stuff. Right. And when I first started the business, um, you know, I, I was just thinking, wow, like, wouldn't it be cool to create a company where I could just take care of my friends, right? Where we could just have a service where my friends are really taken care of, where they really feel thought of, and they really have someone that's really thinking about them. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, um, you know, they're so busy, like, externally focused, uh, both sitting in their vision, as well as their companies, their teams, and they're really making sure that everyone in the world is really taken care of. But when it comes to making sure that they're taking care of themselves, it's often something that gets overlooked. And, you know, and it's also just seeing what does it look like when you really have someone uh, that can be a, a, an amazing advocate for this individual, right? And, and, and this to me is truly the, the biggest aspiration of the company where, um, you know, we have the opportunity to really unlock the potential of a person so that they can just live happier, healthier lives. And, you know, and, and, you know, our whole, um, tagline is, Hey, we want to, uh, really like get things off your plate so you can just do the work that you love, whether that's working on yourself, the work that you're meant to do, whether you get to, um, just be more elevated in the company so that you're just able to create more. And, and I've always known, right. And that entrepreneurs in this world are the multipliers, right. They're the people that really make the biggest impact. So, you know, for us, like we have a, a, a really amazing privilege, right. Where, uh, every single person that we support, you know, then supports, you know, thousand million plus people. Yeah. And, you know, and that, and that's extremely rewarding. And it's also uh, a high responsibility, right? You bet. You bet. Yeah. I love the way you put that, you know, that I just wanted to take care of my friends, you know, and um, I, I've never articulated the work that I do that way, but that is totally it. I just want to take care of my friends. You know, and yes. and I think some of the entrepreneurs that are making the biggest impact in this world through their businesses, that is how they look at it, is they 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 get to through their business take care of their friends. And like you said, when we're serving the caliber of entrepreneurs that we serve, the impact that comes from that because of who they are uh, is massive. It is massive, and and we'll never truly know the impact that we're really having in the world, but we know it's big. We know it's big. And so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So now that we've got a little bit of context set here, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to reiterate the question for the benefit of the listeners. So Zion, have you ever been introduced to a person or persons that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person or persons. And Zion, I'm just really excited to hear your story and your experience around this topic of relationships. Yeah, you know, there's there's someone that when when I first thought about the question, there's someone that I thought about uh, more recently. Okay. But um, but then when you asked me the question again today, I think the first person that uh, came up was uh, D Dimitri, Dim uh, Dima Kozlov, if, okay. if you know him. I do. So, I do. Um, yeah. So Dima at the time was the founder of Maverick Next, which was the kind of like the junior entrepreneurs group of the Maverick 1000. Right. Yep. And yep. it was for entrepreneurs 25 and under that, you know, already hit six figures that were. 
uh, really got to be surrounded by amazing mentors. And, you know, that's how I first came across, you know, Alex Mendozian. It's how I came across uh, a lot of people that I honestly, you know, really rose in this industry looking up to, right, who are now, you know, really dear friends, clients and partners and, and, and everything, right. But uh, I would say that the most significant catalyst, like personally and professionally, in terms of um, really accessing uh, a degree of consciousness, a degree of being able to uh, really understand like what it meant to work on myself, getting exposed to um, you know different types of uh, technologies and different types of tools, and and just getting exposed to the world of you know what the online marketing realm uh, looks like today, right? I would say that if there's one single relationship that has literally you know completely steered like and me landing in this industry right and and in the in the industry of just like you know the online uh business space um and and to be able to kind of like rub shoulders with the degree of people that i i get to just be around and and call my friends i would say it's it's yeah i would say it's definitely uh meeting him and and it wasn't even that i got introduced to him like i just ended up on facebook one day uh ended up in a facebook group and you know he posted something um you know, yeah, he posted something because uh, at the time, uh, Mike Michalowicz was like looking for someone, right? And okay. I was just like, you know, I was super burnt out. And I was kind of, um, you know, I, I had started a couple of businesses in college, and then I, I retired those and I was just kind of in the middle, and looking for something. And then uh, I, I took him up on it. And you know, I ended up never doing anything with with that. But that's how I ended up joining, you know, the Maverick world, which, okay. you know, as a you know, 23, like 22, 23 year old, right? It was, uh, yeah, mind blowing, right? And yeah. in terms of, um, like, it was, it was the most paradigm shifting, like, series of, uh, of events afterwards. Wow. So, what year was that, Zion, that that happened? Um, I want to say it's probably close to maybe like 2015. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So about like nine years ago or so. So, and so, so coming into that world, um, what? So what? So you 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 mentioned Mike, and that you you did some stuff to help him out and stuff. And I and, never I never ended up working with him. Oh, you didn't end up working no. with him. Okay. No. Okay. So what what ended up transpiring once you once you kind of came in and got invited into this world and stuff through Dimitri, through Yannick and stuff and the work that they were doing, what were some of the early things that transpired as a result of yeah. you kind of being welcomed into that world? Um, yeah, you know, early on, I, I was at that time I was running an agency and or I think I just had started the agency. And it was just kind of learning how to run that company, right? Okay. And um, and a lot of it was getting introduced to, um, I think like Dima is the one that introduced me to a lot of my first leadership books, like a lot of the first um, like books on how to run a business, a lot of, um, yeah, just and in, in terms of like traction and EOS and that type of world. So he was the first person to introduce me to, to that. That really shaped a lot of my thinking. But then, you know, the other side of it was, um, really like the personal growth side, right? It's um, how I communicate. It's uh, like, so one of the things that really stick out is um, like an exercise that we walk through called the uh, authentic relating or circling. Are, are you familiar with it? No, no. Um, so it's basically a, a communication framework for relating to a person interpersonally, right? So okay. it's being, um, so it's it, it's like in this conversation, I would say something like, you know, uh, hey, Kevin, you know, when you said blank, uh, it made me feel like this. And, you know, and yeah, and what comes up for me is this. So it's like really me going really deep in my feelings and really sharing what it is. And then you might respond to, oh, wow, like that's how, you know, and wow, like when I hear that, like this is what happens. And here's this, and or even like if I'm upset, right? It's like, wow, you know, Kevin, like you seem really upset with me. You know, the story that I'm making up here, right? About what your, about like what you're saying is is this right and uh and and that yeah and I, I just don't know if that's working right so this level of being able to communicate my emotions and my and my feelings right so even at that that base level but i think the other aspect of it was just being surrounded by 
people to kind of like boost my self-esteem in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, cause when you're, a like, cause I was a broke, burnt out entrepreneur, like in my early twenties mm -hmm. that hadn't quite like really made, you know, any real money yet. Right. Um, I was very much living, I, I think I was living on like maybe like $2,000 a month at the time. Right. Okay. And to be surrounded by just abundance of, and generosity yeah. of, mm -hmm. of, um, of ideas of people of, you know, just financially. And, you know, it's, it's just being in that space, uh, really just pulled me into a different universe, right. Yeah. Where, um, I already couldn't really relate to the people in my world because like I, I started my first companies when I was 19. Right. And, um, and, and then it just kind of like further put me into a different place. And, um, and then, you know, and then it was obviously up to me to figure out what game I really wanted to play mm -hmm. and then go play that game full out. But mm -hmm. being, being in that space and being in those spaces where I could just really uh, receive a, a lot of the, uh, ideas and mentorship and just know that I can really reach out to these people and, and really just, you know, kind of be nurtured uh, by people just emotionally, I think was really significant. Yeah. And so what did that process look like for you, Zion? That, that process of figuring out what your real unique abilities and gifts were and, and getting to this point where you're at now, where you're able to use those effectively to really like, as you mentioned, help your friends and stuff. What did that process look like for you? Uh, a lot of it was eating shit. Um, you know, I, I think the, the the biggest lesson that I'm still learning um, is how to reach out to the people around me to ask for help uh, instead of me having to learn the lessons the hard way, mm, right? Yeah. And, you know, so... To answer your question, like the most direct way possible, it was um, me being reflected back um, just how people were experiencing me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. made the world of a difference because my, yeah, my self-esteem, my uh, level of self-worth, it was just really low, right? So for people to share, you know, wow, Zion, like you're, you're really grounded, like you seem very wise, like you seem, um, you know, like hey, you're being, you're very supportive and you're very kind. And, you know, like when, when I heard those things, it's like, I didn't grow up with words of affirmation in my, in my household. Right. Okay. So okay. Uh, it was something that was uh, significantly not available. Right. Yeah. So, um, and, and not receiving that all throughout life. And then all of a sudden being surrounded by a people that um, where, the acknowledgments were given in abundance and, 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 and very generously, um, you know, that, that was probably like what I needed the most at the time, because it started to really help me piece together, like who I was in the eyes of others until my own, um, image of myself could catch up to that. Right. And, yeah. and honestly, I, I don't believe that it really did catch up until, I, I like for me, I had to, and you know, I had to stack up enough ev evidence externally. Yes. yes. Right. Of, um, you know, like business wins and, and things like that, where uh, an experience and where I could really feel like I could kind of just be there. And then, you know, and then, you know, so one of those years, like, for example, like I, I we grew this business from zero to 5 million in our first year. Right. And the next year, um, you know, we were on, on track for 10 million and then, you know, but all of a sudden we we're just running into cash flow issues because it's my first time, uh, really being a CEO of, of a significantly, uh, fast growing company like that. And, um, and what I didn't realize was how much of my patterns were showing up in the business because of my inability to speak to people directly, to give feedback directly, to, um, say no to people, right? To and it was just like the people pleaser in me that wanted to like save people, rescue people, and and also was living in a, a level of victimhood. And so to to go from like that version to basically having to fire 35 people and then having to like rediscover myself again, um, that was probably the the most challenging period where it was like, okay, well, who am I without this? Yeah. Yeah. Right, like, who am I without this, and how do I be without all of this? 
And how do I show up in the world as just me when it has nothing to do with business? Yeah. And, you know, and that, and that was, uh, and that was in 20, uh, 2019. Uh, yeah, that was in 2019. Right. So, you know, it, it was really, it, it took a lot to kind of figure, figure that out. Yeah. You know, and man, I, first of all, Zion, I want to acknowledge you for speaking just so openly and so candidly about that. And uh, so much of what you shared, I'm like, dang, he's talking to me. That's been my same exact experience. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, after interviewing over 200 entrepreneurs for this podcast and having these close intimate conversations with them, you're, we, we are not alone, man. We yeah. are not alone. And, and this whole thing of giving and receiving, I mean, all my life, I've been this giving, generous person, people pleaser too, for sure. Yeah. And yet I totally sucked when it came to receiving and God forbid asking anybody else for what I wanted, you know, and asking for help and, and, and openly speaking about that because I didn't want to bother people. I didn't want to inconvenience them. I, you know, what would they think of me if they knew that I was dealing with that, you know, and, you know, doing this, just work on ourselves and getting to the point where, you know what, I don't really give a damn what anybody else thinks about me. And, mm-hmm. and I got nothing, you know, my buddy, Jesse Elder always talks about nothing to hide and nothing to prove, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, when we can get to that place, man, what a freeing experience that is, you know, I mean, talk about a weight being lifted that, and, and we, you know, and, and like, I think I used to think that really successful entrepreneurs, they already had this whole thing figured out when it came to giving and receiving. And that's not true at all. That is not true at all. I have, I have supported many entrepreneurs that are running, you know, what on the outside looks like a very successful company, very successfully financially, but yet they, they are not good at receiving. And when they start open themselves up to that, it's like, wow, look what happens, you know? Yeah. And so um, if you look and this will well, this can I actually can I actually mention um share yeah, something? Go on. right ahead. Um, because I think one of the greatest uh distinctions that I received was um, you know, because there's a lot of people out there, especially when they're on their path of uh calling in more things, right? And I and I had a conversation with Jesse because we I just saw him in Austin a few months, like two months ago, right? Okay. And and you know, we were talking about manifestation and how to um and basically how people um, you know, bring things into their world and how do people attract things into their world, right? And he shared, hey, you know what? There's no, there's no repelling, there's only attracting, right? There's no, there's no repelling, there's only attracting based on who you be and how it is that you show up in the world. And um, and you know, and one of the things that you you may think of is like, well, a lot of people think that they're really bad at receiving, right? They they think that they have a lot of issues with receiving when uh that's actually not true, right? Because what they're receiving is usually a lot of guilt, shame, anger, you know, just uh, a lot of victimhood, a lot of um, just a lot of like these other things that they're so good at taking in and receiving. So then, you know, when I'm coaching people, I kind of just like flip that and just say, um, hey, like, you know, you say that you have this story that you're really bad at receiving, but you're not. You're actually really amazing at it. You're you're great at giving yourself shit. You're great at giving yourself a hard time. You're great at like taking, you know, all these things from other people but it's just not in the way that you would like right now, right? So can you just make a conscious shift to choose what it is that you want to receive because you get to decide what comes into your world and if you actually want to let it in, right? Yeah. And I think that yeah. that's a really good separation between the two to really make sure that people are uh, really just consciously aware of, hey, like what, like if if every single thing that you are, you could possibly ask for is always going to come into your world. Right. And, and, you know, the universe is always a massive yes button. Then, you know, are you actually aware of what you're asking for? That's right. right. And I think it's a very yeah. scary thought for, for some people too. Right. It's like, Oh totally. shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, 
And, you know, even coming to their, I mean, you know, Jesse, Jesse was the one uh, 12 years ago that him and I had a conversation, just got really in depth on this subject. And he kind of pointed out, and he's like, Kevin, he's like, you know, you being the way that you are and, and not allowing people to give to you. He's like, you are just shut, shutting down this natural flow of abundance in your life. And he's, and you're also depriving others of having the experience of being able to give to you because you know how much you enjoy it when you give to somebody else who truly appreciates it. Well, stop depriving others. Let them have that same experience that you enjoy having so much. And, you know, and it never occurred to me before that, Zion, that like, yeah, and like what you said, same thing. You say that yeah, we, we are receiving either way. It's like, but what are we see, receiving? And, yeah, and exactly. coming to the realization that like, dang, I have complete control over this, you know? Yeah. And, and it's a pretty amazing experience to realize that and, uh, yeah. and come from that place instead. So if you look back at, you know, the, the many things that have transpired, you know, since, since this experience nine years ago where you met Dimitri and came into this world, you know, what is an example uh, where you were in a position and you got to make a really significant impact where you were like, wow, that was such an amazing experience. And you also know that would have never happened if not for whoever this person was in your life that like ultimately led to that kind of an experience. Mm. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm trying to think about like peak experiences in life. And, and, and I, I think I'm very fortunate that I've just had so many. Um, so I think that, you know, the, the first one that kind of came to my mind was, um, probably like my, you know, my former business partner, Scott. Okay. Um, uh, Scott Olford and, um, you know, he's someone that I just admired and respected so much from afar, right? Just um, because uh, before we ever worked together, right? Like I, like, um, funny enough, he uh, <laughs> was the one that introduced me to him. Is he um, okay? Okay. Yeah, and you know, we just started messaging each other back and forth on Messenger, and you know, eventually, you know, um, I ended up working as a coach for for him, and then. Uh, and then eventually I just kind of, you know, we just decided to, to partner on the company and that was, um, you know, one of the most significant rides in my life. And I think that, um, professionally it really laid down the foundation of, you know, just like, uh, it was a big, it was one of the biggest accelerators, okay. right. Of, okay. uh, of what it really created in my world. Um, it was also what created, you know, the, the, the what I experienced what, what what I shared earlier of hey like we went from you know almost zero to ten million and then uh had to let go of 35 people overnight which was one mm -hmm. of the most heartbreaking uh experiences that I, oh. I've ever had as an entrepreneur right so you know so I look at that experience and I think that to me is the most amazing experience because you know there were so many moments afterwards right where you know it, it just kind of felt like it was getting worse okay okay um because the day that the day that i found out that we had to basically let all these people go it must have been you know a couple days apart was also the day that uh, i found out i was going to have a baby oh okay and you know and then a couple months later uh we miscarried and then you know that and and then what I learned in that was, wow, like, I don't know how to grieve, right? I, I don't know how to experience, like, my own emotions, mm -hmm. right? And af shortly after that, like, maybe, you know, a couple months later, uh, one of my dear friends and mentors took his own life. Wow. And, 
you know, to make it worse, like he shared with me that like earlier in the year that he thought about it like every day. And I just kind of, you know, brushed it off. And I was like, hey, man, like you can do this and whatever without really hearing him. Right. And then, yeah. And then eventually, you know, a couple months after that, you know, I went to a, a different, like I went to like a, I guess like a journey, journey experience where um, I sat with like, um, you know, kind of like certain types of like plant medicines. And like, that's when I realized it's like, wow, like, I have been operating from my neck up and unable to access like emotions like in my body or like feeling right I, I've been numb like I've been walking around numb not knowing what's going on and you know and after that I, I ended up breaking up with you know my fiance at, like my fiance at the time and you know and and that and and then then I really felt like I had nothing right I didn't know who I was because I was so like, my identity was just so integrated with hers. And, you know, my confidence was again, just like su such at an all time low. And um, so it was, it was, that was my version of rock bottom. Right. So not, so I, I think like not knowing who I was and not having anything uh, or not feeling like I didn't have anything except, you know, whatever it was, you know, like what got me through all those moments was me just saying, you know, hey, you have to burn down the house to build a bigger one. I know that on the other side of this, there's something bigger, but when is it, you know, but can it come a little bit sooner? And I've just had so many moments where I just trusted so fiercely that there's something bigger on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, 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 you know, eventually that's the door that opened, right? Where it was like, all the relationships that I had built from that experience of, of working with Scott and all of our clients, everything. It's like, well, all those people did amazing things in the world. Right. And, you know, and I ended up, um, you know, keeping certain clients and everything. And the person that came to mind when you asked the question was, uh, uh, Preston smiles. Okay. Um, and you know, him and I eventually started a business together and I helped him launch that business just as a client. And I was like, Hey, you're about to have kids. Like you're about to have twins. Like, what's your plan? How are you going to run this business? Right. And, you know, it's like, dude, like, I'm not doing anything. Like, I'll run it. Right. Like, <laughs> let me run it. Let me grow it. And, you know, through that company is where I met, um, you know, my current partner, right? Uh, Renata. Because wow. uh, she was a client that came through the program. Right. Okay. So, okay. you know, and we, we ran that company for, you know, just over two years, almost three years. And, you know, I, looking back at it, I always say, Hey, you know what? It was all worth it. Mm -hmm. Like it was all worth it. And of course it was such, it was a, an incredible experience and I really got to step into myself, but it was all worth it because I got to meet her. Right. And of course now, you know, I, I have my, uh, my daughter in my life because of it, but, um, you know, like I, I I realized that like every day and, and this is such a good reminder just for myself right now, right? Where it's like I can't possibly imagine mm -hmm. like how good it can actually be. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no point in me worrying or desiring anything in the future because it can't possibly be as amazing as what it, it will actually be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and just being able to live with that piece of and, and the excitement of um you know i call this miracle consciousness right where it's it's the expectancy that it's going to be absolutely incredible because you know the universe god whatever you want to call it um, wants to just absolutely delight me in my life yeah yeah right and yeah. and being able to really look at that and yeah. you know and, and being able to you know live my life as i am right it was because i went through like you know, the worst of it, right? Where I really had to like build myself back up and yeah, and it was a really beautiful experience. Yeah. When we go, I, I've experienced those dark times. When we go through those dark times and you tell me, I imagine has that just given you a lot more empathy when you hear now other entrepreneurs talking with you about the dark times that they're going through just because 
you can like totally relate to that. You you can feel that now on such a more vivid level because of having been there yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and yeah. And of course, you know, we'll never know what it's like for the other person, but no, no. Um, I, I can certainly... Yeah, it's it's nice that I can see them, mm -hmm. right? I I can see them. I can I can really hear hear them and really just have a space where I can also pull them out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 that's you know and that's definitely a gift that I'm really grateful for that I got out of it. Right. Was, um, you know, just the ability and the capacity to be able to coach someone out of the pit. Mm -hmm. right of of mm -hmm. uh just despair right yeah. and you know so yeah so absolutely right and I'm, yeah. I'm so grateful for uh for all of it because it's you know like nowadays it's yeah it's 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 a good reminder in this because like this week has definitely been like stressful right okay uh, which i'm sure it has for been a, for a lot of people but um but you know I, I think like talking about all these things it's like a good reminder of, like oh you know like we'll be fine <laughs> totally well and you're right you know and and being in this spot where you just know i mean like you know where where we we look back at at what has happened and what you know what it took to get us to where we are right here right now in this moment yeah and and you know i I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't trade any of it for anything because that's what got us. That's what got you here. And this is, you know, my, my past is what got me here. And I'm, I'm pretty doggone excited about what's going on in the here and now. And I get pretty jazzed thinking about where we're going to be in six months, a year, you know, two years, five years, 10 years, because we're just going to continue on this trajectory. We're going to continue growing and just stepping into, you know, just being the best that we can be for ourselves, for those that we serve and all of that, you know? And so for you, what is, what is your vision? What, what, what do you see from your vantage point where you're at right now? You know, uh, what, what do you see for the next year, five years? Uh, from what, from what, aspect because there's a lot of well so the, through, through the impact that you're making and the impact that you're making through your business yeah so you know the the biggest thing right now for me is i think the thing that i've done really well in my career has been the person like i've been the person behind the scenes okay that has really supported uh, someone that really shines, right, and out there in the world, and in and I think that the the my next chapter is really being able to do that at scale, right, okay. at a level of scale, where it's not going to be me that is necessarily doing it, but it's creating the structures where I do it. So, um, you know, so our company Atlas, you know, the the company where we hire and train executive assistants was my experiment right it's my mvp for um like basically taking over an operations department and being able to run a company so okay. i said okay well if i can just prove out hiring training onboarding managing eas mm -hmm. right then what if i could do it for operations managers and project managers and coos and chief of staff and 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 really be able to then eventually just take over the department all together so you know so the the vision's twofold right it's Number one, you know, being able to partner with, you know, just like people that have the gifts to really just uplift um, humanity, uplift human consciousness, to really just support people uh, that have just like solved really amazing problems. Like I have this uh, really amazing client, um, you know, Sean Chasm, where he, um, and he's my only client that I have because I actually stopped taking on <laughs> coaching clients, but, you know, like he works with people that have crippling panic attacks. Right, like okay. can't even leave their house, right? Like their anxiety levels are like they've literally tried everything and then they come through this program and they just heal from a lifetime of of anxiety, right? And wow. it's just like, wow, like this is a solution that exists, right? So it's being able to partner and work with the solutions that exist in the world 
and be able to just really get them out into the world, but be able to create the support structures um, to run these businesses properly okay. so that it can keep on serving and impacting more people at scale, right? So um, yeah, so you know, one day I I would love to say that it's like, wow, like we really power, you know, like a thousand companies, right? Yeah. Like at at that level. And you know, and Atlas is at um almost a hundred clients, right? So it's like we're we're kind of like 10% of the way there. So it's yeah. not like yeah. right. And so you know, so even if I can do that inside the next 10 years, like, okay, like, I, I don't think that'll take that long, but let's just say that it did. Um, I, I, I can safely say that, you know, like through that exercise, I would have impacted a billion people, like really yeah. positively shifted and, you know, really made a dent right in the trajectory without them ever knowing that I even existed. You bet. Right? Yeah. And uh, and I think that's cool, right? Because it's like I'm not I'm not doing it because I need the credit. I'm not doing it because uh, of whatever it is. It's just um, I'm I'm just I just know that I'm just so called and so drawn to this, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just a culmination yeah. of my my entire life and you know everything that I've done so far. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I love that. Zion, for for anybody listening in that is now going, man, Kev. I really appreciate Zion. I appreciate the way he shows up. And for some of them that are listening to some of what you just shared and going, man, maybe he can help us. <laughs> so, you know, what are, what are some resources, websites, what have you, that they can go uh, check out to follow up if they want to? Yeah. So the easiest place to find me is definitely on Facebook. Just, you know, look up Zion Kim. Um, okay. uh, our company is Atlas Assistance, which is atlasassistance.com. Okay. And then, um, yeah, and then as far as a, a free training on uh, just how to clean up your inbox and how to really take care of all that, um, you know, it's at, you know, tools.atlasassistance.com slash inbox dash zero dash method, but I'll, I'll just send you the link for what that looks like. Sure. And it's just a training on, um, hey, like, here's how you can literally get to inbox zero and literally spend less than, you know, an hour a day and eventually be able to uh, hand off your uh, hand off your inbox to your assistant. So, um, yeah, so any, so that's, uh, the one thing that I'm super proud of is like, yeah, we've helped well over a thousand people, right. Just like get at least 10 hours of their time back. And, you know, and that, that, that number is certainly growing. Yeah. Very cool. Well, that's something to be proud of right there for sure. So, well, Zion, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation today and just share from your heart. Uh, any, any last thing you feel led to share before we call it a wrap? Um, yeah, you know, I, I think the most beautiful thing now is having the comfort knowing that um, whenever I'm ready, the right person appears. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and when I, yeah, and, and just knowing that, like, I've also just become that person, right? So it's also becoming the person where, um, you know, like once that, that's actually a poss realm of possibility, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and I think for, for a lot of people listening, it's just really knowing that, hey, you know, like wherever you are, wherever you're at, um, you know, if you just meet yourself fully, and and just have a lot of compassion for yourself and where you are and just not be too hard on yourself and, and really just be able to love yourself a lot more than, you know, then, yeah, I think that love will just be a lot sweeter every day. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, Zion, once again, thanks so much for taking the time to have this conversation today. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate you. And I am excited to get this out there and share it with a whole lot of other entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs, because I know it's going to be really impactful for them. So thanks again, man. Really appreciate you, Zion. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for having me.